Shall we start? Turn this phone off here. All right. Hi. How are you? Hi, I'm Karen from Singapore, Yahoo Singapore. Wonderful. Yeah. So I'd like to find out, you know, this is a very heavy tech movie. What's the techiest part of you? Are you into gaming? Are you into getting the right phone? Are you not? Are you old school? I guess I'm a little more on the old school <laughs> okay. side. Um, I've never done. If, uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't chase the newest gadgets that are out. Um, <laughs> I don't have Facebook or MySpace. Oh or right. <laughs> whatever. I Twitter. Or <laughs> I don't have any of those, but no, I, I guess I keep it quite simple, so that's why this role was great to jump into something much more uh, mm -hmm. technologically driven. It's yeah. a difference for me. And it didn't influence you to be more techie then? No, not really. I mean, you know, it was nice, like on the film, you got to work with a lot of these yeah. cool first of a kind yeah. things. Mm -hmm. I mean, self illuminating suits and, yeah. and just all these sets, I mean, were, were just incredible, you know. the. Um, the practical sets that we had that Joe designed were just beautiful and uh -huh. symmetrical and him coming from an architecture background they were just you know amazing and and, um, and well also you know the Ducati Sports 1000 that was fun to drive that's pretty okay. techy yeah mm -hmm. um, oh I can ask one more question um, okay uh, so what's your what's going to be your favorite story about making this movie <laughs> um man story. I think it's just a, an accumulation of the memories of the times all of us got to have. I mean, yeah. you know, being on set with Jeff Bridges and Olivia Wilde and yeah. Bruce Boxleitner yeah. and Michael Sheen and James Frain and Bo Garrett and also, you know, Joe Kaczynski and Sean Bailey and Justin Springer and Steven yeah. Lisberger. I think the, my, you know, uh, greatest memory is uh, all of the memories of us combined because it was such a great family. And okay. Everybody worked so hard to sort of, you know, deliver this film, and yeah, that's that's my memory. Okay. What would be your first Tron memory? When were you first exposed to the original movie? I watched uh, the first film in 2003. I was doing um, my first film over in Malta, and uh, I was sitting on a balcony of this, you know, an armorer's assistant uh, balcony, watching Tron on a laptop, you know, and all I can hear are the cats jumping from roof to roof and bottles clanging. And Meows, all me. Mm -hmm. That was it. Yeah, I was uh, quite surprised. I'd never seen anything like it. I'd never heard of it before because growing up on a farm, I mean, we had three uh, television stations. We didn't really get to watch movies much unless they were in the video shop. I mean, our theater only played one film a weekend. It was the same film all weekend. I never even got to go to town because oh. that's like 60 miles round trip and nobody wants to spend that kind of gas money. So, <laughs> you know, so. Um, yeah, I thought it was fantastic, you know, and I just get such a kick out of young Jeff, you know, Jeff back then playing those scenes, yeah, I get <laughs> such a kick out of it. I was talking to Stephen earlier and he was um, describing his uh, sometimes discomfort with the idea of the ego within the, you can, you can almost equate it to the internet world, but this, this world where you can act a certain way and it, it's not the same as, as humans as we are now. You mentioned that you don't use MySpace or Facebook or Twitter. I mean, does any of that play into you not wanting to have that online persona? That's my, well, I just don't, um, I don't care to be that connected <laughs> um, or that social or anything, you know, I like, it's kind of the same thing, like, say, look at the world now with cell phones, I mean, uh, even look at the world before there was voicemail machines. I mean, you had to be home or else you missed a call. Mm -hmm. Much more letters were sent. Communication was a little more romantic, okay. you know. And then voicemails are around, so then somebody comes back, they click play, the old-fashioned tapes go, and then you can hear what, you know, um, <laughs> then you can sort of, um, you know, then you get the message, you call somebody back. But now with cell phones, nobody really has anything to talk to each other about yeah. anymore. I mean, you, <laughs> You call each other every point of the day, so what's the point in dinner at the end of the day? <laughs> you know, and, and then what are you going to say? So it's just just twiddle thumbs together. So I like the the I'm probably the only person that enjoys the lack of communication. You know, <laughs> so at least when you get together, it's much more ceremonious. Ceremonial.
<laughs> ceremonial. <laughs> and we're doing a video quiz, so um, and and um, the talents should give them the the right answer. Would you give the right answer for the question that, he, that we have for for you, okay. which would be? I hope that is correct. That you weren't born when the first movie came out. No. Is that true? Yes, that's true. Okay, so could you could <laughs> is that you the right could could you could you uh, talk to the camera and say? Um, uh, introduce yourself and say, "Yeah, that's the right answer." When the first movie came out, I wasn't—I wasn't even okay, born, yes. born, born then. Yeah. <laughs> okay. My name is Garrett Hedlund, and yes, that is true. When the first movie came out, yes, I was not born yet. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you, great. We had the opportunity to hear a little bit about how the costumes were put together and the mm -hmm. lights inside, and I mean, it's so complicated, and it's—it's—it's it's, it's not even really costumes as much as this synthetic film that's yeah. on you guys. Was it the most uncomfortable thing in the world? I mean, how was shooting for hours and hours a day under lights wearing this stuff? Well, it's a new experience, and so I guess it, that's beneficial. I mean, it um, it's difficult when you compare it to, say, having a wardrobe like jeans and t-shirt for, for the whole shoot of the film. I mean, when you're doing a film like Tron and having this suit and it's three quarters inch foam rubber, you're wearing a layer of Under Armour underneath and anybody that's played sports knows what that is and it just gets, you know, it gets quite heated. So, I mean, in terms of that, you know, it's a little more difficult. But for me, I, I like the extremities. I like, um, I like the things like this, you know, I like the things that test you because up until this point, you know, say you'd had the space to kind of walk back and forth and take your time in between scenes and you can sort of separate yourself and come back but under these suits you're under such monitoring because you can't really sit down and stretch and because we'll break the wires you know so you're kind of constantly there and, and people are it takes quite a few wardrobe people to maintain each suit so there would be two to three people looking after me and sort of always right there sort of you know making um, you know, just doing touch-ups and there's always somebody around you, you know. And it's, so then you work, you, you learn how to work under those elements. And uh, so, and then, you know, it, I think it's strengthening. Was it living with this character for so long? I mean, you get cast on around 2008, 2009, right? Yeah, 2008. So now it's 2010 and the, end, and the film will be available at, uh, at the end of this year. So how long has it been living with this character for that long? <clears throat> I think, I mean, it's been great for me because in terms of this film, my anticipation has been just as high sort of as everybody else's. You know, I haven't, uh, I haven't seen much of the film whatsoever. We got to see 20 minutes yesterday of sort of accumulated scenes and, you know, some finished stuff, but, um, you know, that's the most I've seen. Um, I enjoy it. I enjoy the character of Sam Flynn so much, and I enjoy the family of, of uh, Tron legacy that that um, you know. Uh, it's just we've uh, every time we get to sort of get together for either something in terms of this or, or shooting or, or shoots of any kind. It's fantastic because it snaps right back to it feels like there was no time separation between rapping and now. You know, everybody just picks up where we left off, and you know, it's great. It's great to have these people in my life. You know, Jeff Bridges and Olivia and Joe, and you know, just the whole team. It's been fantastic. You're getting into a, a, an extremely geek and nerdy world of the fans. You know, mm -hmm. the hardcore fans. They they grew up on this, and they know what to expect, and they know every detail. They analyze every detail. Are you prepared to deal? With the geek fan. Oh sure, bring it on. <laughs> the West, <laughs> you I'm a good geek myself, man. I, I'm not, you know, so so straight laced in the conservative world. Um, no, I I enjoy it, man. I enjoy that there's people out there that are really excited about it, you know, and and that's great to see. I mean, you know, it's it's a better feeling than if nobody knew what Tron Legacy was yet, and uh, if nobody had heard of it or the first Tron. I mean. Because of uh, the fan base around this, and, and because of Comic Con and what that's, uh, the anticipation that's added to this film has just been, you know, kind of mind blown. You know, ever since when they first showed the first VFX footage, 
and the reaction that ha that had and the domino effect that it caused, you know, there was no script written at that point, you know. And, um, so if it wasn't for Comic Con or if it wasn't for a geeky fan base or something like that, you know, I wouldn't be here sitting in front of you guys right now. <laughs> so I owe all my thanks. Yeah. You watch 3D movies? Have you seen a 3D movie? <laughs> no. I think. It's probably uh, be the first one. Huh? What? No. Um, <laughs> I think I saw Coraline. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, that's it. Yeah. Do you think 3D will last? Yeah, of course. I think it's the, you know, it's the excitement around 3D I think is just beginning, you know. The the excitement around this sort of new technology that makes the viewing experience for the audience this much different is exciting, you know, and I think that's just a tidal wave that hasn't even hit the land yet. Um, you know, I, I mean, for me, I, I'm such, a, I guess, in terms of the much more old-fashioned route, like, mm -hmm. I, you know, I wish there were more black and white films or silent <laughs> films. Or, Let's tell the know, director. No. <laughs> films made with film. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, but I enjoy 3D and I can't wait to see this one. You said that you're uh, you're a geek. If you were if, if Tron Legacy didn't exist and you were going to Comic Con, what would be your big fanboy moment? If you were to meet someone from your favorite movie, Sam <laughs> 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 um, besides him, if I, uh, man, I don't, I don't know, yeah, I don't know. But, uh, I mean, I guess maybe you know. I'd, I'd, I'd be standing on the sidewalk, and if I saw Jeff Bridges pass, I'd say, holy shit, that's Jeff Bridges from John Lynx. <laughs> <laughs> I guess who would you be a fanboy for, in other words? A fanboy for? Yeah. That sounds a little... Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. You know? Yeah. Because it's just, I've mm -hmm. never, you know, a lot of uh, my pals are just, you know, like, say, um, comic book fanatics. Okay. And I've never read a comic book in I my mean, life. fanboy in... Not just in the comic genre, I guess. I guess. In oh any yeah, genre. yeah. I'm just uh, yeah. just referring to yeah. that, I guess, because that comic books are such a big part of, of Comic Con. But yeah, it's just um, it's just different, I guess. Man. Mm -hmm. What would be your favorite movie? Mine. I'm a. I guess like being there, you know, mm -hmm. Peter Sellers. You weren't born there. I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't born before a lot of things. <laughs> movie have a certain significance or why does it resonate with you? Yeah, cause I think, I mean, for me, um, you know, Peter Sellers is such a genius in my mind that, I mean, watching that and, you know, I just, uh, I get such a kick out of Chauncey Gardner. Have you ever <laughs> seen the film? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, I just thought Shirley McLean was incredible back then and the story and it's just unbelievable, you know. Um, um, but also, I don't, Hal Ashby fan, so. He plays kind of a very innocent character. Yeah, movie. of course, and the whole world builds yeah. him up to be something he completely isn't. It's, you know, and it's basically because he sort of just keeps his mouth shut. Isn't that funny? <laughs> it's like that line that, you know, the whole world will, you know, yeah. think you're a genius until you open your mouth kind yeah. of thing. And how was, how uh, uh, could you describe as uh, a typical day of shooting with the special 